So, okay, here's the thing. I'm, today I wanted to show you guys how to, uh, how to add a good textured background to make any project look a little bit better. It can make it look so much more like authentic and uh, more professional and more cohesive and just uh, you background textures make the world go around in graphic design they make the whole thing better let me just show you some examples uh okay here's here's one let me hide this i'm sorry i had this up for a, another thing okay here's a poster that was not this poster is not the professional poster that the movie company put out this is the poster that the movie put out uh i just want to show you the the contrast this looks like um like a second grader project in a hurry for a class this looks like a professional high budget movie poster which is what this is a big high budget movie poster they had like famous actors and whatnot uh all they did was add a few words and add the the background texture and this is not some like great um texture that someone spent hours on they folded paper and scanned it in they folded paper and scanned it in but look how how much different and how much more genuine it looks as far as a uh, a movie poster okay here's another this is a poster that was not this is not the poster cbs put out this is the poster cbs put out and again it's not anything too special they don't have great handwriting they certainly aren't great at like uh you know doing uh drawings and doodles and stuff like that this is not super professional as far as the the drawing quality goes but like look at this poster compared to to this one it just looks incomplete complete it, it makes it uh i don't know it just ties it all together okay here's another this is by a student this is the one he did not turn in this is the one he did turn in he didn't google that background he's got some real paint and painted it on a real piece of paper scan it in okay here's a cd cover that did not exist this is a cd cover that did exist they use that texture okay so here's the thing uh, one place to get textures among many is you can just make it. You can just wad up some paper and scan it in. Take a picture of wrinkled paper or folded paper. Or look around at the ceiling tiles. There's texture up in there. Take a picture of it. Or um, you could go to unsplash.com. Here's unsplash.com. You could just type in the word texture, T-E-X-T-U-R-E. -E. And then uh, so we'll go just peruse through and see what they have. You could get textures from other places too, but these are copyright free. Okay, let's go with that one right there. That's the one I used earlier. I'm just gonna right click it, copy it, go back to Photoshop. Okay, let me show you something. Let's say that we want um, Canada, which is on this wrinkled wadded paper, right? We want it to be like weathered. By the way, okay, if you want a certain color and texture, here's wadded paper, here's green. I want wadded paper on green. So I just put it on multiply. Um, I changed the blending mode, you know, up here at the top, it says normal, change it to multiply. Look at that. Well, I can change it to others too. There's other options. I'm just going to go with multiply for now. Okay. So I want the word Canada to be weathered, like rugged, like it's been through some stuff, right? So remember that thing I got from Unsplash, that, that um, texture that I copied? Well, back over here in Photoshop, I'm going to go to edit, paste, or command V, take your pick, and then command T, well, you know, T means transform. It'll rotate it around. And then um, let me make it large enough to take over the entire words. Okay, here we go. To make it weathered, for one thing, one thing you can do is um, you can go to uh, right-click this layer and go to Clipping Mask. And uh, it makes it so that it's like a window, right? I can just move this and it goes wherever I tell it to go within the word Canada. So that's one very viable option. I'm going to step backward. And, and try a different one just to see what happens. One way is I can go to image adjustments. If I do threshold, threshold, it, it makes it all just black and white, no gray, no other color, nothing. And I can control how much uh, of either I want it to be something like that. So this is like one of those, it looks kind of weathered. It looks like uh, it used to be, you know, black construction paper, but over time it's been wadded up so much, some of the black ink has kind of fallen off or whatever. So um, on the magic wand tool, let me just click one speck of, of white. Let me hide this just so you, you see the little speck of white that I clicked, that right there. Okay, so if I go to select similar, it'll just get all the little white specks. And here's the thing, on top of the word Canada, I'm gonna make a new layer, 
And let me go ahead and just paint it roughly the color that it already is anyway. See, I just clicked and changed this to, to this shade of green. And on this new layer, if I paint it in with the color it basically is anyway, uh, boy, oh boy, makes it real weathered like that. And of course, I mean, I can tweak it. I could change the opacity of it, um, make it lighter or whatever. Here's before, here's after. So this looks like a bunch of, you know, pitch black letters on top of a very textured background. This looks like textured letters on top of a textured background. It looks more believable, right? So, and don't forget, there's always the option too of um, doing the clipping mask. Here's the trick. Okay, if you do a clipping mask, it does not be... It does not need to be two or three layers above the word Canada. It needs to be immediately above, like the hat of the word Canada, not not multiple layers, one layer above the word Canada. Okay, and then if you, or again, right-click it, go to Clipping Mask, you can do that. So there's an option. You could combine both if you want. Here's here's one, here's the other, here's both combined. Okay, so anyway, there's a, there's a thing. Also, good grief. You can have so many different types of textures. So like uh, I could get a map and I could go and suck the color out. Image adjustments, desaturate. And then I could change it again from normal to multiply to see through it or whatever. Look at that. Here's a, here's a map behind the word Canada. Here's wrinkle paper behind the word Canada. Here's both behind the word Canada or good grief. I, okay, here's the word Canada with a wrinkle paper behind let's put a map inside there see what it looks like um again you remember how we would just uh make it immediately above let me throw away the old clipping mess have no confusion okay if i have it as the hat of the word canada um here it is it was the one layer immediately above i can right click it go to uh clipping mask and then look at this i can flip it backward i can go to image adjustments uh, invert to flip it to be the opposite way. I can add that that weathered stuff to it. You can, there's so many different options and most of them are better than nothingness, right? So uh, let's see here. Okay, if you want to do a ver words as a background, that's one thing you could do. I typed out the letter A. Of course, it was at first like this. It was just pure stark white. I wanted to make it kind of see-through. So I put it on, you know, 60-ish percent. On a separate layer, I typed in a U. On a separate layer, I typed in a B. Separate layer, another U. Separate layer, an R. Separate layer, an N. That's how I staggered it. If you type it on one layer, it'll all be straight. Um, but if you type it on separate layers, okay, let me just show you real quick. If I typed in on one layer, uh, oh, dear. Oh, boy. I don't know. That's not what I wanted. My Photoshop has frozen up. So, well, okay, that's probably enough for today. <laughs> oh, dear. It's all coming undone now. Here, okay, here we go. So, if I use the T tool and I type out U, B, U, R, N. See, it's all straight. That's, that's what I was trying to tell y'all. And uh, if I do it on a separate layer, then uh, here we go. I can have them all jagged like that. If I hold Shift and click all of them, I can go to a layer, merge layers. Let's see here, right here. And then I can move this up kind of out of the way. If I want to, again, I can change it to a different thing. Like we'll, we'll put it on overlay, put it on a, a lower opacity, put it on wherever you want just to make it more subtle. And then you can make a clone of that, drag that to the new layer button. And now I have two of them. Oh boy. And then I'll get both of those. And I'll drag both into the new layer button. And now suddenly I have four. I could make a, a pretty detailed um, background texture just out of using words, right? So there's one option. Um, let's see here if, if there's anything worth seeing. The rest is uh, uh, just ideas for things you could scan. Newspapers uh, turn out pretty cool. Wrinkled paper, photo negatives are neat. Handwriting, uh, doodles or drawings, very close-ups of something where you can't even tell what, what it was. Like if you get a close-up of a, um, a floor tile, it may not look like a floor tile. It may just look like a cool texture. Maps are awesome. Designs, x-rays, ink splats, paint texture. It always looks really good. Um, this guy's the limit. You take your pick. So uh, let me just really, really quickly go back to the original and show you the, the contrast. I'm going to get the screen off of here. And then... Just remember this versus this 
take the time to give it a uh, a background text. It will make your project better in the long run. Okay, I think that's my time for today. But I hope you guys have a great day, and uh, just let me know if you ever need to. If